Hello and welcome not to the Seven Foot Studio, but to the Seven Foot Shed. <laughs> the tools have arrived and brought with them the day for my first ever foray into the mystic arts of fret levelling. This is probably going to be quite a long day for me and you don't need to come along for all the tedious bits, so I'm going to skip a lot of them. Um, things like taking the strings off. No doubt seamless. YouTube has taught me that the first job is to check that this fretboard is perfectly flat and level. And that's where this comes in, a notched straight edge. This one by Hellfire Tools. And the idea being that the notches sit above, get it the right way around, the notches sit above the frets and that means that they don't interfere when you're trying to see how flat the fretboard is and already this one's acting like a giant fret rocker and I can see that there's a fair size back bow so I do need to do a little bit of adjusting of the truss rod. I've done a little bit of fettling on the truss rod and hopefully you can see that the notch straight edge is now sitting perfectly flat all the way along the fretboard and so that should mean that the fretboard is flat and ready to go. I'm satisfied that the fretboard is now flat and level so it's time to put away the notch straight edge in this rather unnecessary case that Hellfire give you but hey you know let's not knock it it's done its job and hopefully it'll do it a lot more as well the fret rocker is suggesting that there are problems right the way up the neck particularly up at this end but these are only just a guide really and uh, we're now going to go on to find out exactly how bad it is and see if we can fix it the next step is to put a thin line of black marker pen on the top of each fret which will serve as a guide when it comes to sanding as to where the high and low spots are and where you may need to sand a bit more. Now I've seen this done on YouTube videos many times. This is the first time I've done it. This probably isn't best practice, but I'm a West Country boy uh, and we like to wing it a bit. So I'm not going to tape off the fretboard for this stage. What I am going to do though is tape off the nut because I don't really want to be smashing into it and knocking it off. So the moment of truth has arrived. This is the Calico Guitars 16 inch fret levelling beam and now it's time to use it. I really don't think there's a shallow end with this. I think you've just got to jump in and see how it goes. So they always say to start off half on, half off. So let's try that and just keep going. They say, don't stop. Following the radius apparently is also crucially important. We'll go back and see how we are. Well, this is encouraging. This looks very similar to what I've seen in the videos. We've got some bits where the marker pen has already gone, other bits where it hasn't even touched it, and then other bits where it's just beginning to touch it. So it looks as though the process of levelling has begun. I'm going to crack on now and concentrate on what I'm doing, so I probably won't do too much talking and we'll probably fast forward over a lot of this. Annoyingly, the camera decided to drop out, so I missed a lot of that. But I'm nearly there now. Just got this fret and this fret holding on as little low spots. So let's get on. Thank you. 
That's about as far as I dare go with the beam, but all the black marker has now gone. Fret 7 was a complete pain, that was so low. Felt like I took off loads, but I don't imagine it was much at all. But anyway, it looks as though we now have levelled frets, and they're all ready for crowning. Moving on then, and getting ready to do the crowning, I am actually now going to tape off the fretboard. That's the taping done and now we're ready to start crowning. Similar to with the levelling, the first job is to do a line of black pen along the top of the now flat frets. And now it's time to get out the calico three cornered foil and start re-crowning these frets. We've reached the point now where there's a fairly uniform thin stripe of black marker left at the top of each fret. It's fairly even on the frets and fairly consistent across the frets. So if my internet research is right, that means we're pretty much done. I don't think I dare go any further. I think we should now move on to polishing. The crowning does appear to have slightly sharpened the end of the frets. So whilst we're here, we get out this flat file and just round them over as well. Okay. So to start polishing then we're going to start working up through the grits 400, 800, 1200 before I move on to the fret rubbers. Now it's time for the fret rubbers. As I've done all this work with the wet and dry, I shouldn't need the coarse one, and that's no bad thing, because I've lost it somewhere in the shed. But anyway, we'll start with the medium. And finish up with the fine. I'm not sure how necessary this stage is, but I've noticed in some videos that some people like to use a metal polish to finish off. And as I've got this Brasso, why not? Okay. That's looking pretty good to me. I think it's time to unmask. And the last thing I'm going to do after using all that sticky tape is to give the fretboard a bit of a wipe down with this. Obviously, until the guitar has been re-strung and re-set up, it's too early to tell whether any of this has been a success or not, but I will say this, they do look good. So what I'll do now then is I'll restring the guitar, give it a basic setup, and I'll come back and we'll see whether there's been any improvement from all of this work. It's a new day and since the last shots I've restrung the guitar and given it another basic setup. 
This time I've used the Fender Specs as a starting point and tweaked it from there to try and get it to be a sort of a good feeling, a good playing and a, and a good sounding guitar. And I think I'm pretty close. So where have we got to with the setup then? Well, the relief is around 10 thousandths of an inch and with the action, the high E through to the G are pretty much at Fender specs of 4 30 seconds of an inch. But then from the D down through to the E, I've raised it up progressively to be around 5 30 seconds on the low E. Uh, the reason for that was it, it was just a little bit flabby, still a little bit buzzy down there and doing that has tightened it all up without really affecting the uh, playability of the guitar. Just made it better, really. So what are my thoughts on fret levelling after my first experience trying it for real? Well, it's a scary thing, isn't it? I think we're all a bit scared of it. That's why I haven't done it, for sure. Um, but it's certainly doable. I mean, I, I didn't find it hard. It's, it's something you have to pay attention to and you have to follow it through the steps, but I wouldn't say it was hard. And I think I've ended up with quite good results. These tools performed perfectly. They've got a very simple job to do, but they did it well. So top marks to Calico and top marks to Hellfire. Fret crowning. Well, again, this was really my first experience of doing it properly, certainly across a whole fretboard. And uh, yeah, it was eminently doable for a novice. You've just got to pay attention to the instructions that are available on YouTube and elsewhere and follow through the process methodically. Stay in the moment, get it done. And uh, yeah, I'm learning that these things aren't quite the dark science that we all thought they were. And certainly at this level, it's doable for any home enthusiast, really. Having now set it up twice, I still can't really fault this bridge by Wilkinson. I mean, 20 quid, <laughs> what is there to lose? These compensated saddles are great. Um, there's always a compromise with old school style bridges, but this compensation means that this guitar is actually pretty well in tune with itself. Um, it's not perfect, but it's pretty bloody close and I've certainly had a lot worse. I do have one little gripe about the tuners and that's that the gearing on this last one here is a little bit sloppy so you can turn it about a quarter of a turn without it affecting the tuning at all which is not the end of the world but you know it's just a bit crap um, but these are 30 quid tuners and in all other regards they're excellent. If you've watched this series from the start and why wouldn't you have You'll remember that I was wondering just how much of this guitar's problems were down to the bridge and just how much was down to the fretboard being a bit like Bodmin and Moore. Well, it seems as though it was 50-50. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. They were both equally to blame. Um, changing the bridge and levelling the fretboard has transformed this guitar. It's not perfect, but it is already a lot better. And uh, going forward, I think there's going to be more in this novice series because once I've got used to it, I think it may be time to look into the electrics, see what we can improve down here as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.